Hello again, my name is Keith Rucker and uh, today we're going to work on building the core box to go with the uh, pattern that we've been working on uh, for the new pulley that's needed for the J Vance uh, matcher that we're working on restoring. Uh, in the last couple of videos we actually built this pattern, this wooden pattern that we'll use to cast uh, the pulley and this is the old pulley here again in case you missed the other ones, other videos that we did. Uh, this pulley was actually uh, damaged uh, on the machine and needs to have a new one built. So uh, we're going to actually build the wooden pattern and have that cast. Okay, so the pattern is here uh, and we've actually painted it now. It's not just bare wood as it was before. Uh, but now that it's painted, I think you can hopefully see is what's going on uh, with the core prints and the core box. Uh, the black part that is painted on here uh, will actually be the, uh, the pulley portion uh, of the pattern. Uh, the yellow parts on the ends, these are what we call core prints, and this is actually when we put this down into the sand uh, to make the mold that's going to go to the, in the foundry, uh, these yellow parts will actually hold the core. And if you will think of the core, basically what it's going to be is a sand uh, column. Uh, in this case, it's going to be two different diameters, larger on this end and smaller on this end, that will go through the pulley and uh, uh, after it has been cast, of course, the, the molten metal will go around uh, this core that goes through and you'll have a hollow spot inside. So in our original uh, uh, pulley here, of course, we've got the shaft that goes all the way through, uh, which represents the short end here. And then on the other end, uh, there's actually a recess that goes inside the pulley here about two inches deep. Uh, and so that's the reason for the two different sizes. So this larger end is about three inches in diameter and it's going to go about two inches deep inside the pulley. So when we make our core box, uh, you can imagine this, uh, this yellow piece, is, is just think of it going inside here about two inches deep, and then it'll go down to the smaller diameter of the shaft that goes all the way through. But again, in order to do this, we actually have to build the core box, which will be what the foundry uses to make the actual core that will go into the, the pattern. So now hopefully you get a better idea of what we're talking about with the core box, and. Uh, we're going to get busy actually building the core box. So this is the uh, piece of wood that we're going to use. I just glued this up from some lumber. And the first step we're going to do is actually make the large end of the core box. That's three inches in diameter. Uh, so what we're going to need is a half of a hole. Uh, the core box will actually only make half of the core itself. Uh, you'll make two of them uh, and glue them together to make the, the full round piece. So uh, we'll start by making a half of a hole cut into the end here. And it needs to go in three and seven eighths inches deep. Uh, so we're just gonna cut this off about four and a half inches and then using a Forstner bit, we'll just come into the end here and actually make that hole that will become part of our core. And then the following part, we'll actually use a, uh, a, uh, a core box or a core bit, a uh, core box bit on a router to make the one inch diameter uh, hole in the rest of the wood and then we'll glue it all together and have the two pieces so you'll see that as we follow through. So we're going to go ahead and cut this off and then we'll go over to the drill press with the Forstner bit and uh, make that cut. We're ready now to drill this hole and just to let you know what we've done here, I just took a uh, sacrificial piece of wood, cut the same size as the block, this, these two pieces here, what I'm working with. But because the center of the drill bit is going to be right here on this part line, I just took another piece of wood and clamped it on here. And that just gave me a little bit more wood so that I could get the center exactly on there. I've got the drill press set up here with a, a three inch diameter Forstner bit. Uh, which is the same diameter we need. Uh, I know that we need to go three and seven eighths inches deep, so I've already set up my depth stop on the drill press uh, to go that deep as well. Uh, so we're to the point now, we're just ready to go ahead and, uh, and drill this hole out.
we go. Our hole should be to depth. Uh, we'll double check that and make sure everything's just right before we take it out of here, but we should be ready to go to the next step. We've got the um, first part of the core box done now. This was uh, the part that was drilled out with the Forstner bit. And as you can see, it's just basically half of a uh, circle, half of the drilled out circle that goes down to the depth that I need. And uh, I just took the board that I clamped off here. So this will be for the large diameter, uh, the three inch diameter, which will be the hollow spot inside of the, um, of the, pa of the, the pattern or the part. Uh, next, uh, I need to get the, uh, the part for the shafts that will be going through the pulley. And it's a little bit smaller diameter. It's a uh, final diameter will be about an inch and a half. Uh, so my pattern that I made, I actually turned that down to about an inch and a quarter, but actually just a tad over an inch and a quarter diameter. Uh, in the pattern itself, uh, so uh, that'll give me some room once I get it past where I can remove some material, bore that out on the lathe, uh, and be ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to actually uh, cut, do a similar type thing, make the cut uh, a half circle here again uh, for the shaft that will go be put together with this piece. To do that, instead of using a drill bit, because it is rather long, uh, long, uh, uh, cut, uh, I'll use uh, a router using a core bo box bit. And a lot of people probably have seen these core box bits in the rat router catalogs. It's just a, uh, uh, basically a half circle here. Let me see if I can get that focused. There we go. Uh, just a half circle here. Uh, and they're called core box bits because they're used, uh, were traditionally used by pattern makers for making core boxes. Uh, most people will see these in a router catalog and not know why they're called a core box bit, but that's the reason for us for making cores. And so I have set up on my router table behind me here uh, just a core box bit. Uh, I have the next piece of the uh, actual core box itself will be cut out of this block of wood right here. And uh, we're just going to make a couple passes uh, and cut this uh, in there. It'll go completely through. Uh, this block of wood will then be connected to the other block of wood uh, to make our core box. So I'm going to do this in a, in a couple of passes just because it is just a lot of wood to be removed in one pass. Uh, so we'll run a pass and then we'll turn around and run another pass. the second uh, part of our core box cut here and this pretty much takes out uh, the cutting that needs to be done so these two pieces uh, will just be uh, put together uh, like this right here and uh, we'll put a end piece on the end here so that it will be uh, have something to hold the sand in there and the core box is pretty much done we have finished making the core box now um, just did a little, couple little, few little things to it there. First thing we did was we just took the two sections here and I glued them together. Uh, because it was across end grain and, and gluing across end grain usually doesn't make a very strong uh, joint. I, I just uh, reinforced that with some strips of wood on the side, uh, which were also glued. And I just put a couple of uh, finished nails in here on either side to give it some strength. Also uh, on the end here, I just put a strip of wood across here. This is just a cap. Uh, to put a stop to the end of that right there. So now uh, this core box is pretty much ready to go and you can imagine the way this is going to work is uh, we'll fill this with sand uh, that has a little uh, adhesion in it, kind of like some glue mix mixed into the sand um, and uh, we'll actually make two uh, pieces, two halves of the core, uh, pop them out of this, they'll be, uh, be nice and, and stiff and we just glue those two pieces together to get a circular core and then we lay that the core into the prints that are will be left in the in the sand pattern or in the sand uh, mold uh, when we get to the foundry I thought I'd show some pictures here um, of a pattern that I made a while back that we actually took through the casting process um, in addition to doing pattern making and woodworking I also do some metal casting uh, just a little 
hobby I guess I picked up, a little trade I picked up just out of necessity restoring old machines. But I have a, a little small foundry, set up a little small furnace uh, that I can melt aluminum and brass in. I can't do cast iron because I can't get it hot enough. Uh, but on, on several occasions I've actually done some casting work. So this is a, a, a pattern for, a, it's actually for an idler pulley uh, that I did several years ago for a friend of mine. It's very similar to one we just did except not quite as complex. It's just basically a round cylinder that has a hole through it. It would have been very easy for us to just machine this out of a piece of uh, aluminum, uh, which was material that was made out of. But at the time we were getting ready to do a little demonstration, wanted to do a little foundry demo and casting demo and, and actually machining demo. So we decided to, uh, to make a pattern and go through the process of casting. So unfortunately I don't have any video of that, but I did take several pictures along the way. So I thought I'd go through and just kind of show you. So as you can see here with this picture, uh, you know, it started out as a split pattern, very similar to what we had uh, that, that we just got through making. Um, so uh, very similar to how we just made the uh, core box. Uh, this is an actual core box for this pattern that we made. It's, it's a lot simpler. Just had a single shaft going through there. Uh, and you can see it was made just like we did this other one with the core box bit. And uh, what you're seeing me doing right there is, is we actually mixed up uh, the sand uh, with some uh, a binding agent uh, and we're just packing that uh, sand into the uh, into the core box and uh, end up with something like this. This is us just scraping the top of it off uh, to make it flush. And we would we would do two halves and uh, take those two halves and uh, from there we would glue them together into a, uh, a, a core. So here's a picture showing the two halves. Uh, actually the binding material that we were using in here hardens with uh, carbon dioxide so we had a CO2 tank and uh, we we're actually uh, just uh, exposing those to a high level of CO2 so that it would harden a little bit quicker. And this is the actual core that we were through with. Okay from there uh, kind of go through the casting process. So the first thing that we did was uh, we take half of that split pattern and we put it into the flask. The flask is the metal piece that's around this pattern and you can see it uh, in just the patterns, half the pattern sitting in the bottom of, uh, of this flask. Uh, from there uh, we took in uh, molding sand and uh, the molding sand it's just a, a fine sand that has a little bit of clay mixed in with it and also has some other additives including some oil that just kind of help bind that sand together so it can be packed down and it will hold that form very well. Uh, so we just filled the flask up with sand uh, and uh, throughout the process uh, we just packed it down real good and tight. Uh, continually putting new sand in there and packing it down real tight. Uh, until we got the, the flask completely full. Once the uh, flask was full of sand, we just took a board, scraped across the bottom of it, and, and flattened that out. And the next thing we did was we would flip that whole bottom flask over. And again, you can see the, the bottom half of that pattern. Uh, and of course, the pattern goes up, at th it's molded in that sand underneath that. From there we take the uh, top half and put on there and we take the top half of the flask and also uh, put on. These flasks are, are actually made so that they, they go together one way and when you take them apart and put them back together they'll be exactly in the same spot. Uh, the little spout looking thing next to that, that's actually going to be the pour hole uh, where we will pour the molten aluminum uh, into, this, uh, into the mold and then there we, we cut a little channel from that pour hole over to the casting so that it could flow in there. So with that done, uh, again, uh, we just uh, uh, start packing in more sand uh, until we get it uh, pretty much up to the top. And again, here's just a shot showing us uh, with a little trowel uh, cutting out a funnel. And that's where we're gonna pour the, uh, the molten metal into. Um, this is us putting us a little vents in there because of the heat uh, in, in, in that uh, mold, uh, there's going to be a lot of gases that come off of it. Uh, so we just take a little piece of wire and put some vent holes in there uh, to help those gases escape without messing our pattern up. 
and there's the pour hole ready to go. Uh, once that's done, we take the two flasks back apart. Uh, the white stuff in between there is actually uh, just uh, some fine sand that we put in between there to give a parting layer so that the, the sand does not bind to one another. Uh, parting dust is commonly used for this. Uh, I think actually I think actually what we were using right there was uh, cornstarch, just something uh, to go in between there, in, in between the two, the two layers so that the, the pattern can be taken apart. Anyway, we get in there, we remove uh, the two halves of the pattern out of the uh, flask, and, uh, and then we take the core that we had before and we lay it into those core prints. And as you can see, when you put the top half back on, onto the uh, uh, bottom half here, uh, that core is in between the two pieces and uh, you can kind of imagine when you fill up that uh, hollow void in there with molten metal, uh, we'll have that piece of sand running through there, the core running through there uh, that can be uh, cleaned out later and you'll have the hole going through the, the casting. Okay, this is my homemade furnace here that, that I built. This runs off of propane. Uh, in the bottom is a crucible and, and we just put in some aluminum that we were melting down there. This is uh, just a shot where we took the top off. I think we we're putting some more metal in there that we we're heating up. Uh, you can actually see in the bottom, if you look real closely, you can see the, the glowing uh, crucible in there where it's just red hot uh, and the aluminum is melting in there. We just uh, melt out enough aluminum uh, to, uh, to do our pour and uh, it takes uh, probably 30, 45 minutes for that to melt. And uh, then from there, uh, uh, we take it and pour the, the metal in there and this is the metal after we, we made the pour uh, and it, we, we purposely kind of overfill it because as that metal cools it will actually uh, suck more metal down into it so you, you want to make sure you have a in that pouring hole you want to have a reservoir of, of molten metal because like I said as it cools it will actually suck uh, you'll see a little funnel shaped uh, thing appear at the top of that molten metal as it starts to cool down uh, and then during that process it shrinks as well. Uh, I don't think I have a picture of the casting after we took it out but you can pretty well imagine what it looked like and then that was taken in uh, to the machine shop and, and we bored out the inside uh, using a boring bar and then uh, put that on a mandrel and, and, and turned the outside diameter and uh, presto we had our, our idler pulley that we were wanting to make. So hopefully those pictures will give you a better idea of the, the actual molding process, the foundry process uh, that you go through uh, when, when pouring metal. And uh, I wish we could get pictures of, of uh, this pattern going through the foundry, but I'll be sending this off to a foundry uh, a long way from here, a little too far to travel to, that does a small one-off jobs uh, like this. Uh, so we're going to mail these pieces off and hopefully here uh, in a, a month or so we'll get our castings back and uh, we can start the machining process. So there you go, uh, we got the core box done uh, and pretty much this uh, project is ready to ship on to the foundry. Uh, when we get the pieces back, we'll come back and we'll start showing you how to machine this thing out.